Uh, we actually have two presenters uh, for the next uh, presentation uh, from Adventus. Uh, I believe uh, Hiromitsu uh, Takasan will start off the first se section. Uh, Hiromitsu Takasu is a senior engineer at Adventus in Bollingen, Germany. He has uh, 17 years of experience in device interface design from signal and power interpretive perspective. Uh, he is proficient in high fix connector and robot design simulation and verification. He holds a mass degree, a master degree in electrical engineering from Kyushu Institute of Technology. Uh, the second half of the presentation will be presented by uh, Yasuyuki uh, Kato. Yasuyuki Kato is an R&D staff engineer at uh, Adventus in Gaoma, Japan and focus on thermal control and device handling for handler. He has a master's degree in electronics and information in engineering from Tokyo Denki University. Please uh, go ahead with your presentation. Okay, uh, thank you, Honjin. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Hiromi Takasu and working at Arvantes, Germany. Uh, Today, uh, I will present this slide entitled uh, Socket Design and uh, Handler Integration for High Volume Over the Air Testing of 5G Applications. Uh, this is a joint project between um, Arvantes Europe and Jose Moreira and uh, Arvantes Japan, uh, Ritomo Kikuchi, uh, Natsuki Shiota, uh, Yasuki Kato, Hiroyuki Mineo, and myself. So uh, here you can see the presentation contents. So I will first present over the testing challenges and then show uh, possible audio testing approaches for high volume manufacturing. And then uh, my colleagues Kato-san will follow up the handler integration options. So uh, in this presentation, I will focus on the hardware design for testing audio applications. So I will not talk about the test result details uh, because of limited time. Okay, and so let me start to talk about uh, 5G frequency band and the application. So uh, 5G is a major driver for uh, future mobile applications and uh, it will adapt a bunch of uh, applications. The frequency is mostly used at 24 to 40 gigahertz and uh, it will go higher. So uh, here you can see the DUT overview and uh, the 5G NOL AP module came in different sites and the configuration. They are composed of multiple dual polarized patch antenna for uh, this top firing. And uh, in some configurations, uh, they also have the dipole antenna for side firing. So 5G cell phone will contain the multiple module and uh, they might also not be all equal in terms of uh, antenna configurations. They are an uh, example of AIP packages. So millimeter wave uh, patch antenna footprint size becomes smaller now and uh, now it's fully integrated into one package or modules. The test engineer should consider uh, or to cover uh, those multiple types of applications. So which means the socket and the handler integration become difficult. Okay. So uh, this is a uh, AIP example of uh, real applications. Uh, we disassembled Samsung S20 5G new smartphone and uh, we saw uh, two types of uh, 5G AIP module uh, integrated. So in this case, uh, we saw uh, these two top firing RF module on side and uh, one uh, top on side firing RF module on top. So um, we spent uh, not cheap money for this investigation, but uh, we reassembled it again, and uh, it works as a super expensive web browser now. Okay, so 5G now is uh, defined by uh, 3GPP, and uh, it also defines uh, these three types of 
uh, ODA testing. Uh, there are several uh, test methods, but those test setup are weak and uh, not easy to use them for uh, 5G uh, high volume production. So uh, lower cost approaches are needed. So uh, this is a smallest uh, 3GPP compliance test setup in our lab. It is called a uh, compact antenna test range setup. So uh, this set setup has a reflector uh, between reference antenna and the test antenna. And uh, we have developed many types of uh, customized antenna for OTA testing and uh, verify them with this setup. So uh, let's move to quick review about uh, near field and uh, far field definitions. So if I have an antenna on the test, uh, which is called AUT, uh, there are three regions. The horizontal axis shows the distance from AT and the borders are defined by uh, those equations. It's defined by uh, web lengths and antenna sites. So first, it's a reactive near field. Uh, the region is uh, very close to antenna. And uh, in this region, our uh, electromagnetic wave is almost not radiating. Second, it's a radiating near field. Uh, in this region, our uh, electromagnetic wave starts radiating, but uh, it's still not prana wave and uh, the antenna beam is not correctly formed. Those two regions are not good for OTA testing, but the mechanical dimension can be smaller. Uh, it makes much side testing possible. The third one is a uh, far field. And uh, in this region, uh, electromagnetic wave is a completely final wave and uh, the antenna beam is correctly formed. In this region, uh, it's best for uh, OTA testing, but the mechanical dimension is bigger than others. So uh, much side testing is challenging. So uh, we have uh, developed ATA, OTA testing options for uh, previous three regions. So they are working on our millimeter wave test system, uh, which is uh, V93. 93K a web scale millimeter card cage. Those pictures show the device interface, uh, which is customized for AUT. So in this three setup, uh, AUT tester and the PCB are always same, and uh, the difference is only uh, testing antenna. So this profile setup is using one antenna, uh, which is uh, off the shelf parts. The radiating near field is using uh, our custom design patch antenna and uh, it rotates uh, inside the socket read. The reactive near field is uh, using a probing antenna. The technology it's using similar with probe card and uh, it can measure each patch antenna individually. So I will summarize the each features on the next slide. So these tables show uh, each test pros and uh, cons. And uh, the far field setup is very simple and uh, easily compared with uh, R&D bench instruments. But uh, in case of hybrid production, much site implementation is complex and uh, test costs will be higher. The so radiating near field setup is optimized for uh, high volume production it can be easily adapted to much site testing. But the measurement antenna will have impact uh, due to the standing wave effect. There is no absolute measurement. The only way is correlate based on the golden device. The so reactive near field uh, setup can probe each patch antenna and uh, it also can be adapted to uh, much site testing. But the, due to its complex design, uh, NRE is highest in this full setup and uh, the read time is also wrong. The OTA loopback is a lowest solution. 
and uh, but the failure coverage is uh, limited. And uh, also uh, the calibration is uh, challenging. So each weights have uh, pros and cons and uh, we need to choose the best way uh, based on the test requirement. From the next slide, uh, I will show the details of the radiating near field test setup. In this slide, uh, you can see an implementation of a low cost radiating near field socket. The distance between the AUT and the measurement antenna was set to 11 millimeters. It's not defined at, at random and uh, it was selected uh, based on the standing web effect measurement result. The main socket body is uh, decided to uh, consider electromagnetic wave performance and uh, mechanical reliability. The antenna width, this antenna in the width design will have multiple options because of the design is different, depends on the test requirement. I will show you the antenna design options on next slide. So uh, this table show the measurement antenna options. The open wave guide is made by the metal and uh, the performance invariance to temperature. So, but the size is larger than PCB antenna. So uh, it calls a uh, complex mechanical integration. The dual polarized patch antenna is small size and uh, low cost, and uh, it allows uh, separate polarization measurement, but it requires two uh, measurement resources or RS switch. And the PCB will have manufacturing variations. So Tokyo provides patch antenna requires only uh, one measurement resource, but uh, it cannot measure the two linear polarization independently. The other features are same as uh, dual provides at patch antenna. The dipole antenna can measure duty, uh, can measure a duty dipole antenna array directly, but it still have a manufacturing variation uh, due to its PCB manufacturing process. So uh, each antenna options have uh, pros and cons, and uh, we need to choose best way uh, based on the DUT configuration. So uh, now my colleagues Kato-san will take over and talk about the hardware integration. So uh, Kato-san, please. So, oh, hey, sorry, uh, Takashi, before your mm -hmm. colleague take oh. over, a few mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. uh, could you go over again the, uh, which of the OTA test approach is the best one? I know you mentioned that uh, you have the, each has pro and cons, but uh, from okay. your experience, what will be the consideration? Okay, so uh, basically uh, we think uh, the, that the, pros, the method is, uh, should be defined by test requirement. And uh, so when customer wants to uh, measure a characteristic measurement, so in that case, the far field uh, measurement is best, we think. But uh, the 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 DUT yield is better now, and then uh, we propose the radiating near field is uh, best for uh, mass production. It it depends on the uh, device uh, test request. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Kato san, please go ahead. Okay, uh, thanks, Takasu san. Hello everyone, uh, I am Yasuki Kato, working at Advanced Test Japan and in charge of an um, OTA test unit development. I will present the OTA test unit for performing multi-site OTA test and temperature control with a handler. For discussion simplicity, we assume a patch antenna array on the AIP DUT. We are considering three types of handler integration in near field OTA test. The first one is OTA test with a dead bug. 
signal quality is good because an antenna is fixed on a load board and no need to disconnect the antenna line at every contact. Need longer e electric lengths and double number of contacts due to top side contact, but for only DC digital and IFRS signals. The second is the live bug without measurement antenna disconnect method, which also requires no disconnection of the antenna line, so signal quality is good. Since the antenna is fixed on top of the socket, so DUT cannot be transported vertically in an existing handler. Therefore, we are developing the OTA test unit as an additional option to the existing handler. So I will explain it in detail later. The third is the live bug with measurement antenna disconnect method. The, this method allows DUT transfer with, uh, with existing handler that requires a contact arm to have the waveguide. So the contact unit becomes larger and the number of merge site is limited. Also, since the antenna is repeatedly disconnected, so a highly reliable interconnect is required. Next, I will present far field OTA test with the handler. For far field, we are developing an OTA test unit using the same method as the live bug without measurement antenna disconnect for near field OTA test. There is a socket at the bottom and the antenna is placed on top of the socket. So the OTA test unit transports the UT to the socket from the side. So we are developing the OTA test unit for docking to the handler M4841, but we are also considering docking it to other companies' handlers. So let's shake hands. This is summary of good, acceptable, and bad ratings for each of the OTA test unit method described so far. For the ideal measurement antenna connection in the first line, the all three types of without antenna disconnect is good. For the item contact motion in the fifth line, the live bug without measurement antenna disconnect is in near field and the far field is not good, but we are developing the OTA test unit as a solution. Uh, for the item socket size in the fourth line, the width measurement antenna disconnect is rated as bad because the size of the antenna connection is large and number of test sites become smaller. However, the UT can be transported and tested with existing handlers. So the good point of each type are different. Therefore, we are developing each method so that we can provide the best solution to our customers. From the next page, I will explain a little more about the OTA test unit for live bug without measurement antenna disconnect. The handler in the figure is M4841 and the tester is V93K with wave scale millimeter card cage. The purple unit in between the two is the OTA test unit. The OTA test unit is different for both far field and near field, but the mechanism is almost the same. The concept of the OTA test unit is to be able to connect to existing handlers without mechanical modification. The power release is by two for far field and by eight for near field. These high priorities could test more DUT in a smaller area and lower test cost. The temperature can be applied from low to high. So I cannot explain the detail here, but I will present the outline of DUT transportation by the OTA test unit. 
The OTA test unit is connected to a part of the handler where a tester is docked normally, and the tester is docked below the OTA test unit. The OTA test unit receives DUT from the handler at the orange square area in the right figure, and DUT is transported to the socket and contacted. The design of the OTA test unit for M4841 is completed and we are evaluating it. This is an electromagnetic performance setup of the OTA test unit 4x1, and here is the video of DUT transportation and contact sequence. So please see the video on the left. DUT is transported from the pocket in front to the socket and contact it and perform OTA test. The video on the right is close up view of the contact area. So this method of transporting and contacting DUT eliminates the need to separate the antenna line and enables high quality signal transmission. Also, the antenna height can be changed depending on characteristics of DUT. This is an electromagnetic performance setup of the weed antenna disconnect method that does not use the OTA test unit. It uses the existing handlers to transport DUT and perform it OTA test. It uses a waveguide and antenna line is disconnected for every contact. In this video, the UT is transported from the side because the UT is transported using the OTA test unit four by one. But actually, the UT is transported vertically to the socket using the existing handler. We are using the OTA test unit as a temporary for transporting dummy antenna devices. The key is the quality and durability of the waveguide blind mating interconnect. We have already made a waveguide blind mating interconnect reliability setup and conducted um, evaluation. Here you can see our waveguide blind mating interconnect reliability setup. This test is critical to adapt handler integration. Left hand side graph shows the insertion loss accumulated error at 1 million cycles. As you can see in the graph, the result shows plus minus 0.1 dB variation. So we have achieved quite good stability with this design. This is an example of manual socket to handler unit correlation. Left hand side shows manual type socket for the backing, and right hand side is using protape handler unit for mass production. As you can see, both test results, both power and EVM measurement results has pretty good correlation. Next is example of antenna connection option correlation. Left hand side shows prototype handler without antenna disconnect. I already explained in, on previous slide. And right hand side shows antenna disconnect design using waveguide. As you can see, both test results, both power and EVM measurement results have pretty good correlation. So let me summarize as conclusion. There are multiple options for OTA testing. There is no op op optimal choice. It depends on the test coverage requirements from customer. So Advan Test has developed solutions for all auto OTA testing options. We can deliver entire test cell, which includes socket and handler unit. The radiating near field approach has several drawbacks, but is the easiest and lowest cost approach for OTA. So solution for multi-site integration in a standard AT test cell is available from Advanced Test. So that's all from my side. Uh, thanks for your attention.
Thank you, Kathetan. Okay, so we got a quite a bit of question here. So a uh, quick question is the um, what is the index time you, ex you expect on your uh, OTA handler unit? Uh, it, it will take two seconds with the advanced handler, like M4841, but the unit can adapt with other handler. So, but we need to calculate based on uh, connected handler specs. Okay. So, based on the picture and the uh, video, seems the testing is happening in the uh, OTA handler units or uh, adapter units. From that perspective, do you still need the uh, big uh, production handler? Because uh, that seems the testing is taken away from that uh, traditional test uh, test location. Uh, Mute. Awesome. Uh, uh, sorry, so let me answer the question. Ah, thank, so, you, thank you. So um, the current prototype handler cannot apply the temperature or uh, the bin sort. So uh, it can um, only our, our verification of our mechanical uh, design. So, so uh, we need a real Handler, you need to expand uh, the uh, multi site testing or uh, apply temperature or uh, bin sorting. So it's just, just a prototype now. And uh, now uh, we are uh, developing the, the, the real uh, handler unit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is a question uh, on how to online clean in this handler. Uh, do you guys have any uh, feedback on that? So, Karo-san, can, can you answer? Sorry, could you say it again? Uh, how to online cleaning in this handler? Online cleaning? Yeah, online cleaning. I, I suppose that's the clean the sockets. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Now we are considering many things. So, uh, so uh, yeah, yeah. L let me consider it. Is it okay. answer okay for you? Uh, sorry, you, you want to? Ah, okay. Yeah. Sorry, uh, I. Uh, are you sharing something or you, you want to uh, take this offline? Uh, I am not sh sharing. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think with, with, yeah, if you if you don't have, a, um, if you want to take this offline, that, that's okay, yeah. So another question is, uh, is thermal control units available um, in this handler? Uh, yes. It's available. Okay. There's a question on how do you calibrate such millimeter wave pipe interconnect system uh, overall? Okay, uh, let me answer the question. So uh, basically, uh, the radiating near field, uh, so there is no uh, absolute calibration method. So uh, the basically radiating near field uh, needs to uh, correlate with golden device. And uh, in case of a uh, five year setup, and uh, we can measure uh, the test cables independently. And also uh, we have uh, antenna gain, uh, which is uh, uh, we can get from the antenna vendor. And, uh, and also we can calculate the air loss uh, with equation. So, uh, so that's why uh, we can calibrate the all uh, the far field measurement. And but uh, we can, so we, we are not focusing on the calibration on the radiating near field. 
Great, thank you. Uh, another question. So, uh, mm -hmm. what percentage of the 5G package market does Adventus think that the OTA testing will be in coming years? Oh, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> we don't know. No, no. Uh, yeah. So, but yeah, that, uh, at that, least that, the, the, the real application will uh, going up in a couple of years af uh, after. So it's hard to predict at this moment. <laughs> I okay. Think. Yep. Uh, what is the expected maximum parallelism uh, in this handler solution? Okay, so increase. now for far field, it's by two, currently. For near field, uh, it's by eight with uh, temperature control. But if you need more like by 16, we can consider it. Okay. For near field. So uh, any concern on uh, interference uh, when you're testing multi-site, uh, the inter interference between each site while testing? OK, so um, the far field setup, uh, we can make uh, the completely separate uh, student in box. And, uh, but the resulting near field it's uh, we need to uh, study more, but uh, basically um, the millimeter wave, uh, it's uh, the power, it's uh, easy to uh, uh, degrade. So, but uh, we will uh, measure uh, uh, after that. So uh, currently uh, I, ha I have no idea about uh, the, Isolation of uh, uh, isolation. So sorry about that. Thank you. Uh, I think that we have another question. Interesting. Mm -hmm. in, um, mm -hmm. What type of handler uh, is durable for integration with your OTA handler unit? Is it only uh, does it only apply to pick and place, or could be some other type of handler? Uh, so we are considering considering to the yeah, pick and place like uh, horizontal transfer type now. Okay. Thank you again uh, for the great uh, presentation. To once again, thank our sponsors who've made this event possible and made it uh, available without re registration charge to the attendees. Our premier sponsor, Kohu, our emeritus sponsor, John's Tech, our honored sponsors, ISC, IWIN, and TSE. Uh, our distinguished sponsors, Backer Hotwatt, Innovative Circuit Engineering, JMT, NIDIC SVTCL, R&D Altanova, UI Green. And lastly, our exhibitor sponsors, ELES, MJC, Phoenix Test Arrays, and Smith's Interconnect. So I'd like to thank all of them and also uh, give an extra special shout out to Kohu, who is our premier sponsor. And uh, they are the market leader in test interface solutions for very challenging applications in different areas. And also would like to thank ISC, uh, who's the global number one total test solution provider with products in the elastomer socket and inner posers, uh, spring pin socket solutions, and burn-in socket solutions. So once again, I thank all the sponsors. I thank you as the attendees. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow at 7 a.m. Pacific time. I wish everybody a great day. So thank you.